If you've ever tried doing research online, you know that there are many barriers to academic knowledge. Many of us experience this in different ways. So let's say that we wanted to study, you wanted to study with me, corruption in this context. Go to Google, Google Scholar and enter a search for campaign finance. So here are the top 10 articles. This first one, very famous one by my former colleague Pam Carlin and Sam Zakharov. Um, you would find, to get access to this article, you'd have to pay $29.95. The second article, housed at JSTOR, you'd have to go through to get permissions from the, from the Columbia Law Review. Not quite clear how you would do that. Third article, again, $29.95. The fourth article, protected by Questia, we learned that you can get a one-day free trial to all of these Oxford University Press articles. You'd only have to pay when that day is over $99 to continue for the year. Here's the fourth article, again, protected by JSTOR. The fifth article, it's an economics article, so the price is right on the surface, $10 to purchase access to this article. If you're a member of the knowledge elite, then you have effectively free access to all of this information. But if you're from the rest of the world, not so much. So we decided to take action against this problem. We started a movement and called it the Open Access Initiative at Berkeley. We called for free, immediate online access to all research publications produced by our university. At first, it seemed like a crazy idea. But as time went on, we gained public support. We pressured Senate committees and held public panels. Faculty members spoke up in favor of our cause, and our campaign was signed by over 1,600 faculty, students, and staff in less than 48 hours. In July 2013, the UC Open Access Policy was finally approved. From now on, all research published by all campuses of the University of California will be free to access online by default. But we're not done. Access is merely the first step in reforming scholarly communication. And our community has shown us new challenges in making knowledge accessible to the public. And this is where Peer Library comes in. At Peer Library, we're creating the next generation of tools to facilitate the global conversation on every scholarly work. Our vision is to develop a collaborative online community where scholars and researchers can discover, read, and discuss various open access literature all within one site. In our view, an article should not be a silo of knowledge standing by itself. Rather, it should serve as a seed of knowledge, from which questions, insights, translations, and issues should emerge and be shared. Our platform serves as a medium for real-time collaborative reading. Our annotations will be interoperable with other projects through the emerging W3C Open Annotation Standard. We will also proactively push public annotations to the Internet Archives for permanent storage because we think data should survive in the commons even when projects die. We are part of the open source community and we are building on top of projects like Mozilla PDFJS, Hypothesis and Meteor and we are integrating them into a unified experience. We plan to integrate hundreds of open access journals and repositories into our search engine in order to enable a rich layer of collaboration for all publications. Many people are excited about the library. They can wait to start using it in their classes, research groups, and reading clubs. Peer Library is going to produce a unique part of scholarship, a map uh, of the papers in the literature annotated by the community in Content Mine, we're going to take all of these papers and automatically extract the facts from them and put them back uh, into the uh, peer library. I think that there are plenty of online communities and participants in online communities that are eager and willing and ready to share their insights on academic scholarly literature. And they don't really have a good venue to do so. We don't really have a commons, a pool for that content. And whenever there isn't one, we should really construct one. It's not difficult, it's only a matter of time, and it can really use the support. Uh, so I think that the Peer Library exemplifies this opportunity of providing a commons for uh, knowledge and commentary on academic literature that really should exist. And I can say from experience that uh, the Pseudo Room, our community here, that consists of citizen scientists and, and folks working outside of institutions, could really aim to benefit from Peer Library as a resource, as well as to participate in that community in building a large uh, open knowledge share. On academic discourse. It's essential actually for the kind of work that we're interested in doing 
which is really pretty cool. So far we've been building Peer Library completely on a volunteer basis, but now that the groundwork is done, we're ready to grow our project and liberate as many publications as possible. We're an open source project and we actively welcome any new member into our community. Join us in the movement to democratize knowledge.